and then passes under this band and so bow stringing is avoided when the finger is flexed. You can examine the tendon for tenderness by palpation. And you can also check for tendon crepitus, nodules and triggering or locking of the finger. Swelling and nodules along the tendon can cause trigger finger as the affected area gets caught at the A1 pulley. The point for injection of the second flexor is just distal to the proximal transverse crease. For the third flexor, it's halfway between the proximal and distal transverse creases. And for the fourth and fifth flexor tendons, it is about one centimeter distal to the distal transverse crease. For the thumb flexor, it's just proximal to the thumb MCP crease. Mark the injection point with a retractable pen. In this case, I am using the third flexor tendon for demonstration. Remember to avoid injecting towards the sides of the tendon as the neurovascular bundle can be damaged. These injections should always be done using sterile precautions. A no-touch technique is used, meaning that once the area is clean, it must not be touched with anything but sterile needles. I'm using a mixture of 2% chlorhexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol. Here I have a 1 mil needle with a 25 gauge 5 8 inch needle and a mixture of 20 mg of depomedrol and 2% xylocaine made up to a volume of 0.6 mL. Advance the needle vertically down towards the tendon sheath. It should go in about one and a half centimeters. Remember that injection must not be done within the tendon. You can ask the patient to flex and extend the finger. If the syringe moves, then the needle is within the tendon and it should be withdrawn a little and rechecked. Inject the solution. It should go in freely. Dry the area and apply a bandage. Ask the patient to flex and extend the fingers. Pain relief can be 